Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're diving deep into the cosmos for some seriously mind-blowing space facts. Get ready to have your mind blown as we explore the weird and wonderful wonders of the universe. While it's a fascinating and somewhat whimsical idea, the universe doesn't technically smell like raspberries and rum. However, scientists have discovered a specific chemical compound in space that is also responsible for the flavor of raspberries and the aroma of rum. The compound in question is called ethyl format. It's an organic molecule found in abundance in certain regions of space, particularly in giant molecular clouds. These clouds are vast reservoirs of gas and dust where stars are born. Ethyl format is responsible for the distinctive flavor of raspberries and the aroma of rum due to its chemical structure. When astronomers detected this compound in space, it sparked a wave of popular interest and led to the playful description of space smelling like a cosmic cocktail. It is important to realize that, in the vacuum of space, man would not be able to smell anything. Our sense of smell depends on airborne molecules. Although ethyl format is a noticeable molecule, the space is filled with a complex mixture of chemicals, some of which may have less pleasant odors. So, while the idea of a raspberry and rum-scented universe is appealing, it's essential to remember that our senses are limited and the actual experience of space would be quite different. Nevertheless, the discovery of familiar molecules in the vast cosmos is a testament to the interconnectedness of chemistry on Earth and in space. How about some cooling facts in this hot summer? Is space really incredibly cold? The short answer is, it's complicated. But let's get into it. While we often hear about the frigid temperatures of space, it's important to understand what cold means in this context. Temperature is a measure of the average kinetic energy of particles in a substance. In other words, it's related to how fast the particles are moving. This means there are very few particles in space. With fewer particles, there's less opportunity for heat transfer. Heat is transferred through conduction, direct contact, convection, movement of fluids, and radiation. In the vacuum of space, conduction and convection are negligible. Radiation is the primary method, but without a nearby heat source, an object in space will gradually cool down. So, while space itself doesn't have a temperature in the traditional sense, an object placed in space would eventually reach a very low temperature. This temperature is often referred to as the temperature of space, which is around 2.7 Kelvin, it is minus 270.45 degrees Celsius or minus 454.81 degrees Fahrenheit. However, this doesn't mean you would instantly freeze solid if exposed to space. Your body would actually radiate heat away quite slowly due to the vacuum. The bigger threat would be lack of oxygen and the rapid boiling of bodily fluids. In conclusion, while the concept of cold in space is different from our everyday understanding, it's true that the environment is extremely hostile to human life due to the lack of atmosphere and the absence of a heat source. The short answer is, space is mostly silent. This common misconception arises because sound is a vibration that requires a medium, like air or water, to travel through. Space is a near-perfect vacuum, meaning there are almost no particles to carry sound waves. But there's a twist. While space itself is silent, there are ways we can hear what's happening out there. Sonification of data. Scientists can take data from space, such as radio waves or x-rays, and convert them into sound waves. This process is called sonification. It's like translating information from one form to another that our ears can understand. Gas and plasma in space. Some regions of space, like nebulae or galaxy clusters, contain enough gas and plasma to support the propagation of sound waves. However, 
these sounds would be far below the range of human hearing. So, while you won't hear the classic sound of a spaceship flying by, scientists can use technology to make the invisible sounds of the universe audible to us. Black holes are regions of space-time where gravity is so strong that nothing, not even light, can escape. While they come in various sizes, the real cosmic monsters are the supermassive black holes. These behemoths reside at the centers of most galaxies, including our own Milky Way. Their masses can range from millions to billions of times that of our Sun. One of the most famous examples is Sagittarius A, located at the center of our galaxy. It has a mass equivalent to about 4 million suns. However, this is just a mid-sized supermassive black hole compared to some of the real giants out there. Ton 618 holds the current record for the most massive black hole ever discovered. It's located about 10.4 billion light years away and has a mass estimated to be around 66 billion times that of our sun. It's so massive that its event horizon, the point of no return, is larger than the orbit of Neptune. How do these black holes get so big? Scientists believe they grow through a combination of factors. Accretion. Black holes consume gas and dust from their surroundings, increasing their mass. Mergers. Black holes can merge with each other, creating even larger ones. Understanding these cosmic giants is crucial for our understanding of galaxy formation and evolution. A supernova is the explosive death of a massive star. When a star at least eight times the mass of our sun exhausts its nuclear fuel, it collapses under its own gravity, triggering a cataclysmic explosion. The energy released during a supernova is absolutely staggering. It's equivalent to the total energy output of an entire galaxy for several days. This immense energy is released primarily in the form of light across the entire electromagnetic spectrum, from radio waves to gamma rays. To put this into perspective, a typical galaxy contains hundreds of billions of stars, each emitting its own light. A supernova can briefly outshine the combined light of all those stars. This incredible brightness is due to the immense amount of energy released during the collapse of the star's core and the subsequent shockwave that tears the star apart. It's important to note that this extreme brightness is temporary. Over time, the supernova fades as the expanding debris cools and disperses. The Fermi Paradox is a thought experiment that highlights the apparent contradiction between the high probability of extraterrestrial life and the lack of evidence for any such life. The paradox is named after physicist Enrico Fermi, who is said to have posed the question, where is everybody, during a lunchtime conversation in the 1950s. He argued that if intelligent life is common in the universe, and even if space travel is difficult, it seems reasonable that at least one other civilization would have visited or contacted Earth by now. Let's take a view to key points of the Fermi Paradox. Vastness of the universe. The universe is incredibly large, with billions of galaxies, each containing billions of stars. Statistically, it seems highly probable that life, and perhaps even intelligent life, has arisen elsewhere. Time for travel, even at a fraction of the speed of light, it would be possible for a civilization to colonize the entire galaxy within a relatively short period of cosmic time. Lack of evidence, despite the vastness of space and the potential for countless civilizations, we have yet to find any concrete evidence of extraterrestrial intelligence. The Fermi paradox remains one of the greatest mysteries of science stimulating debate and research into the possibility of extraterrestrial life. The question of whether the universe is infinite is one of the greatest mysteries in cosmology. While we can observe a vast expanse of space, our current understanding of the universe's geometry and its expansion rate doesn't definitively tell us if it stretches on forever. 
Here are some key points to consider. Observable universe. This is the portion of the universe that we can see. It's about 93 billion light years across. Beyond this, we have no direct observational data. Flat universe. Current evidence suggests the universe is flat, meaning it doesn't curve like a sphere or a saddle. A flat universe could potentially be infinite. Expansion. The universe is expanding at an accelerating rate. This raises questions about whether it will continue to expand forever or eventually collapse in on itself. Limitations of observation. Our ability to observe the universe is limited by the speed of light. We can only see as far as light had time to travel since the Big Bang. In conclusion, while we have made incredible progress in understanding the universe, the question of its infinity remains an open one. It's a topic that continues to fascinate scientists and philosophers alike. Our Milky Way galaxy is on a collision course with its nearest neighbor, the Andromeda galaxy. This cosmic dance is set to begin in about 4.5 billion years and will reshape both galaxies dramatically. So, how it will happen? Gravitational pull. The mutual gravitational attraction between the two galaxies is drawing them closer together at a staggering speed of about 110 kilometers per second. Galactic merger. When the galaxies collide, they won't smash into each other like solid objects. Instead, their stars will pass through each other as the vast distances between them are enormous. New galactic structure. The collision will likely result in a larger, elliptical galaxy. The exact shape and structure of the resulting galaxy will depend on the precise orientation of the galaxies when they collide. No impact on our solar system. While it sounds catastrophic, the chances of our solar system being disrupted during the collision are relatively low. The individual stars within the galaxies are so far apart that collisions between stars are unlikely. It's important to note that this collision is not a destructive event in the traditional sense. Galaxies are mostly empty space, and the stars within them are incredibly distant from each other. The collision will be a slow, drawn-out process, taking billions of years to complete. Neutron stars are the remnants of massive stars that have collapsed under their own gravity. When a star much larger than our sun runs out of fuel, it explodes in a supernova, leaving behind an incredibly dense core. This core is so compact that protons and electrons are forced to combine, forming neutrons. Hence, the name Neutron Star. What makes neutron stars truly exceptional is their magnetic field. As the star collapses, its magnetic field is amplified to unimaginable strengths. Imagine a magnet so powerful it could erase every credit card on Earth from a distance of thousands of kilometers. That's the kind of magnetic force we're talking about. To put it into perspective, the strongest magnets we can create on Earth are nowhere near the strength of a neutron star's magnetic field. These extreme magnetic fields can accelerate particles to nearly the speed of light, producing intense radiation. Some neutron stars with particularly strong magnetic fields are called magnetars. These cosmic magnets are not only incredibly powerful but also play a crucial role in various astronomical phenomena such as gamma-ray bursts and pulsar emissions. For a long time, the Moon was thought to be a completely dry, celestial body. Early missions, including the Apollo landings, seemed to confirm this belief. However, recent discoveries have painted a different picture. There are some evidence of water ice. Polar ice deposits. Scientists have found strong evidence of water ice in the permanently shadowed craters at the moon's poles. These regions are so cold that water ice can persist for billions of years. Hydrated minerals. Studies have also revealed the presence of hydrated minerals on the lunar surface, indicating the presence of water molecules bound to the mineral grains. Lunar atmosphere. 
While extremely thin, the moon's atmosphere contains trace amounts of water vapor. The exact source of water on the moon is still under investigation. Possible sources include Comet and asteroid impacts. Water-rich comets and asteroids colliding with the moon could have deposited water ice. Solar wind. The interaction of the solar wind with lunar soil could produce small amounts of water. Internal sources. The moon's interior might have released water through volcanic activity in the past. In conclusion, while the moon isn't covered in vast oceans, the presence of water ice and hydrated minerals opens up exciting possibilities for future lunar missions and our understanding of the moon's history. That's a wrap on today's science adventure. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button for more mind-blowing facts.